This morning we had the producer price index, which moved the markets a little bit, but really kind of paled in comparison to yesterday's monumental CPI day. And in this video, we're gonna be taking a look at what's on the move today and whether or not the change in the wind that we saw yesterday from CPI can continue or if things will reverse. There's a lot of markets we gotta get into. First, let's take a quick look at the producer price index that we actually got. So the year over year number today came out at 2.6% on a year over year basis. Now that was compared to the 2.3% consensus and the previous number was 2.4. Now they also revised the number uh, from 2.2 to 2.4. So what we've kind of got here is a hotter than anticipated producer price index. And sometimes people get confused by what I mean by hotter than expected. Hotter just means a higher inflation rate, right? People say prices, uh, the, the producer price index or consumer price index is hot if it is coming out higher than anticipated and prices are rising fast. So the producer price index was not necessarily great news today, but let's now have a look at the markets and see what the reaction has been. And as we get into today's video, I do want to also mentioned today's video sponsor vantage vantage markets allows you to trade everything from cfds for indices commodities like gold and silver as well as uh, global indices and currency pairs and so much more there's a great sign up bonus that is available down below in the description but please note that this offer is available only for people outside of the united states fortunately for us people this doesn't apply but if you're outside of the us looking to trade cfds check out vantage down below so in terms of a market reaction here i know a lot of my audience talks about gold or looks at gold a lot. So what we can see here is that on the reaction of initially, there was a big sell off in gold, big drop uh, on this hotter than anticipated uh, PPI print. Now, please note, this is after gold had a huge jump yesterday, thanks to the consumer price index. So what's interesting here is not only did it briefly go down, but it kind of shot right back up. Gold buyers uh, seem very, very strong. And maybe what this weighs in on is the fact that, yes, the producer price index wasn't perfect, but most things seem to be, generally speaking, more bullish for the outlook of interest rate cuts this year. Let me elaborate. Unemployment rate has been steadily rising, which is a concern for the Fed. And if that does continue, the Fed may choose to cut interest rates to stimulate the economy a little bit and keep that number from continuously rising higher. At the same time, the PMI data for services, which is a large component of the US economy has been pretty weak recently, actually going into contraction territory. Same story for manufacturing. We've seen weaker than expected PMIs for manufacturing recently. And the consumer seems a bit uh, feeling under the weather with this recent uh, poor uh, retail sales data coming out of the US as well. So there is a case here overall, in my view, for interest rate cuts this year. And we can actually see that in the FedWatch tool as well. So when we look at the FedWatch tool, what we can see here is that right now the market is anticipating for the September meeting a pretty much 95 plus 96.3 percent chance that we actually see our first interest rate cut by the September meeting and a very slight possibility that we see two by the September meeting which would suggest maybe there's just a tiny possibility that we see a first rate cut in July I don't think that's very likely and neither does the market but it is possible that if we continue to see data rolling in the way it's been rolling in, September is very much uh, potentially the first rate cut that we see. And if we take a look at December, by the way, it's a 99.8% chance that by the December 18th meeting, we will have seen at least one rate cut. Very interesting. We also saw a blip lower on the NASDAQ here, but only to be found uh, buying back aggressively following through here to the upside today. Here's the four hour chart. It's big, big sell off yesterday, and it seems that there there is still demand for technology. If you listen to my uh, thought process yesterday, I did mention that I am still long technology. I am bullish on technology. And so the NASDAQ is still my favorites, you know, my favorite of the indices. Now, a lot of people will say, you know, yesterday with rate cuts now on the table that they want to rotate out of technology and into other things. That was the theme yesterday. In fact, we saw very aggressive buying on things like the S&P 500. So if we just pull this up, you can see the S&P 500. We saw aggressive buying overall recently and aggressive buying today. A lot of people are actually diversifying. They're moving outside of just technology. But personally, I still really like the tech trade overall uh, because it's what's gotten us here in the first place. The market has been so strong, mostly off of technology. And I like that trend. I like that momentum. And I'm not quite ready to abandon that theory. And if we take a look at the euro dollar, it's actually just at a level of resistance that looks really 
interesting here. We'll see if this can break out going into the new week, but we're very close to breaking a multi, multi month high. And speaking of multi month high, if we take a look at the British pound, you can see we are actually trading at a high of the entire year right now uh, for 2024. We've seen a huge breakout. Uh, the elections are now uh, behind us for the UK, and uh, we see a huge, huge follow through to the upside off of this recent dollar weakness. So we'll see if that continues. Personally, I actually like it on the long side if we get pullbacks. Uh, if that happens, I may choose to take a position, but right now, just waiting as it does seem a bit overextended. I wouldn't short it personally, but looking for pullbacks. Here's a look at the top setups page, and remember that later today, we will be getting the commitment of traders data. We are doing a 55% off sale on the Edge Finder that is ending today. So if you'd like to get more than half off of the tool, there will be a link down below in the description for you. Don't miss it as that discount is ending, like I said, at the end of the day. On the bearish side, we do have things like dollar yen, dollar Swiss. These things are getting more bearish readings, and we've got to talk about the yen. So the dollar yen absolutely cratered in the last two days. And, uh, you know, if we take a look at a one hour chart, you can really see the effects of uh, what's been going on the last. This is a 2.7% move uh, from peak to trough, which equates to about 430 plus pips. I mean, that's a huge amount of movement in the Forex world. And uh, what we can see here is, you know, obviously big drop, little come back up and then we actually dropped again this morning. Uh, many people are speculating that this is, you know, intervention from the Bank of Japan. It may be just good old fashioned dollar weakness. And in that case, the yen is looking as a relatively more attractive option. The US dollar really, really sold off heavily. And so with that, you know, sell off in the dollar, it leaves a little bit of a gap for maybe people who are looking for more stability to look at the Japanese yen as interest rate cuts seem pretty, um, imminent for the US. I do wanna also say though, that when we talk about interest rate cuts, these are not certainties because September, while it is very likely that we do see a rate cut, you have to go back in time. And uh, to do this, I wanna remind everybody what we saw at the end of 2023. Markets were actually expecting six rate cuts for 2024. Here we are in the month of July, and we have not had one rate cut. So you can see that markets can get very carried away. They can go over their skis, if you will, when trying to make predictions and things like that. So will we see a rate cut this year? I think we'll at least see one, maybe two. Uh, that's kind of what the market thinks. And you know, I, I earlier in the year thought we would see like three. I thought three was a more conservative uh, basis when everybody was saying six. But now I think I've revised my thought to like two. I think two is, is very appropriate. We are seeing data cooling on both sides. You know, the labor data and the economy is showing some signs of, of cooling, not weakness, not, not crashing, but cooling. And uh, on the inflation side, we're seeing some good progress. I hope the content has been helpful to you recently. We've been going all out on trying to make these videos better for you guys as an audience. And I do also wanna mention, remember that if you're looking for a better brokerage to trade CFDs outside of the United States, consider checking out our video support Porter Vantage. Down below in the description, you'll find some information on that. And remember that our sale is ending today, so don't miss out on the big discount on the Edge Finder as well. Have a great weekend. See you guys next week. If you're looking to improve as a trader, we've got some cool free resources here that I wanted to share as we close today's video. Down below in the description, there is a link to join our Discord channel or our Telegram channel. And we also have our website, a1trading.com, where traders can get access to free course material to help you improve as a trader. Remember, we are also live Monday through Friday on this channel around 9.30 a.m. U.S. Eastern, broadcasting most live news events and that sort of thing. So hope to see you there. And also, we do have a couple videos here showing up on the screen. If either of these seems like it might be helpful to you, then make sure to click here or here, and we'll see you there.